Welcome to section 17 of bacteria. This is our bacteria overview figure. In this video, we'll be discussing Staphylococcus saprophyticus, which you can see right here. This scene takes place in a wooded area next to a large sap tree. Sap sounds kind of like saprophyticus, so we've used a sap tree as our symbol for this organism. Sap, saprophyticus. Notice that the squirrel has come to the tree to collect some sap. Maybe she's planning on using it for a delicious meal. Do you notice anything unique about her shirt? That's right, it's purple. We've shown her wearing a purple shirt to help you remember that Staph saprophyticus is a gram-positive organism. This is a gram stain of Staphylococci organisms, which we've shown in several other videos. Again, notice that the organism stains purple, which is why it's a gram-positive organism. Also notice that the bacteria are circular, or cocci-shaped, and that they form clusters. This type of morphology is unique to Staphylococci. Okay, moving on. Pay close attention to a few other details about this cartoon girl. She's a young, attractive-looking cartoon, and she also appears a bit frightened. She got so nervous that she accidentally urinated, and you can see the urine on the ground right below her. These ideas were shown in the image to help you remember that Staph saprophyticus is a common cause of urinary tract infections in sexually active women. So a young, attractive-looking girl who urinated for UTI in sexually active women. Okay, I mentioned that she appears a bit frightened, which is why she urinated. But why? Well, because there's this massive bison who appears to be guarding the tree. Who wouldn't be frightened standing two feet away from this massive animal? Luckily, the bison is tied up with his chain, so maybe she'll be okay if she collects the sap quickly and gets the heck out of there. We've included the bison in this image to help you remember that Staph saprophyticus is novobiosin resistant. The fact that the bison has a chain around him alludes to the idea that he's exerting a resisting force on the tree. So, resistant bison for a novobiosin resistant. We discussed this figure in section 9, which was our video on the Viridans group Streptococci, but recall that if there is no clearing around a disc saturated with novobiosin, then the organism is novobiosin resistant. Notice that there isn't a zone of clearing directly adjacent to this disc. So, if this were a novobiosin disc, then the organism here would be novobiosin resistant. For step one, you need to know that Staph saprophyticus is novobiosin resistant. Okay, let's continue discussing the image. Notice that we've included our happy pet cat who has decided to come along for this risky adventure. The cat realizes that the bison can't reach it, so it's seen arrogantly marking its territory. Just like in other images, the cat represents catalase. Remember, if we include the cat in this image, it's catalase positive. If it's not included, then you can assume that the organism is catalase negative. So Staph saprophyticus is a catalase positive organism. This is a picture demonstrating the catalase test which we covered in more detail in section 7, which was our video on listeria. Recall that the bubbles indicate that the organism is catalase positive. Notice that, just like the girl, the cat is urinating because he's marking his territory. All of this urine should make you think of urease. Recall from our video on Staph epidermidis that we showed the cat urinating in the drain to represent the urease test. So similarly, We've shown the cat urinating in this image to help you remember that Staph saprophyticus is urease positive. So urine generally will represent urease, and if a young woman has urine right next to her, this will represent a UTI. We've covered this test in the last video, which is our video on Staph epidermidis, but recall that the pink color in the test tube right here indicates that the organism is urease positive. Notice that we've shown the cat urinating on these flowers. The vibrantly colored flowers covered in urine are here to help you remember that Staph saprophyticus is part of the normal flora of the female genital tract. Okay, now let's talk about treatment. Notice that we've shown our attractive young cartoon girl with hairy or furry toes. She might want to consider shaving those toes because it's getting pretty out of control. Anyways, furry toes sounds kind of like nitrofurantoin. We've included this part of the scene to help you remember that an uncomplicated UTI is frequently treated empirically and nitrofurantoin is one of the first line agents. So furry toe, nitrofurantoin. Notice that the sap now appears shiny. This is because this sap tree makes sap which contains meth crystals. No wonder this girl keeps coming back to the sap tree even though a huge bison is guarding it. She's addicted to the meth and the sap. Meth sounds like trimethoprim and sulfamethoxazole. So in our images, we'll use these meth crystals to represent trimethoprim sulfamethoxazole, or TMP-SMX. The meth crystals in this image should help you remember that TMP-SMX is also a first-line agent for uncomplicated UTIs and is an effective treatment for Staph saprophyticus. Okay, now that we've covered the image, let's review with a question. A 19-year-old sexually active female presents to the office with dysuria, urgency, and frequency. Urine cultures reveal gram-positive cocci. What two lab tests would be most helpful in distinguishing the causal organism from other members of the genus. A, the catalase test and the urease test. B, 
the catalase test and the type of hemolysis observed on blood agar. C, the type of hemolysis observed on blood agar and the coagulase test. D, the coagulase test and the catalase test. Or E, the coagulase test and the novobiosin test. Okay, from the question stem, hopefully you notice that this girl is presenting with dysuria, urgency, and frequency, which is consistent with a UTI. The fact that she's young, sexually active, and urine cultures have revealed gram-positive cocci, all suggest a diagnosis of Staphylococcus saprophyticus. With this in mind, we're asked about the two lab tests that can help us distinguish this organism from the other members of this genus. And do you remember the other members of this genus? Staph aureus and Staph epidermidis. Hopefully now that we've covered each of these bugs, you were able to think about each of the images and come to the right answer, which is E, the coagulase test and the novobiosin test. Okay, let's discuss why E is the correct answer and why the others are incorrect. Notice that I've included lab details about each of the three members of the Staphylococcus genus that you need to be familiar with for step one. So Staph aureus, Staph epidermidis, and Staph saprophyticus. As you can see, all three organisms are catalase positive. However, Staph aureus is coagulase positive, while Staph epidermidis and Staph saprophyticus are coagulase negative. So the first test that can be used to narrow down the diagnosis is the coagulase test. Next, notice that both Staph epidermidis and Staph saprophyticus are urease positive. So this test doesn't help us too much. However, the novobiosin test does help us distinguish these two because Staph epidermidis is novobiosin sensitive, while Staph saprophyticus is novobiosin resistant. So if you look at the answer choices again, you'll notice that every other option leaves us with an inconclusive diagnosis. If this was a difficult question, I would encourage you to go back and review the videos on Staph aureus and Staph epidermidis. Okay, that should be everything you need to know about Staph saprophyticus, which means we've concluded this section.